Superman Legacy is not an overcrowded film. You guys are just being dumb. I swear, the way some of y'all be writing on James Gunn's meat over every single creative decision he's ever made has got to be studied. Oh, I just want a Superman movie. And that's exactly what you're getting. The amount of people I've seen all over the internet claim how Superman Legacy is going to be another overcrowded film or how they're casting too many people. They're making all these judgments when the movie hasn't even started production yet at the time of this recording. Like, I'm pretty sure this was also a similar issue like before Oppenheimer came out. Like, I remember there were plenty of people complaining of too many like big name celebrities all culminating in this one film and i from what i've heard oppenheimer is like one of the best movies of this year and it still does a well enough job of focusing on the titular character and i guarantee you same thing's gonna be done with superman legacy the main focus is still gonna be superman and lois lane and a lot of y'all also assuming that a lot of these castings are gonna be like more than cameo roles now gun did confirm that like some of the more heroes are gonna be more than cameos like i'm assuming with mr terrific or like guy Gardner, green lantern but not every single major cast casting that we're getting is going to be majority of the runtime the only reason that we're hearing a lot of these castings is because if we do see like a cameo or like a minor role of a hero like hot girl for example it's important to announce who's playing that character because we're going to see her again in the dcu she's going to be playing that throughout the remainder of the universe and y'all are also acting like james gunn can't handle a large cast like he's proven himself multiple times that he knows how to make really good comic book movies with a large cast look at the guardians of the galaxy movies all three of them it's like with the most beloved one of the most beloved trilogies and like out of modern comic book movies the suicide squad had a really large cast and in my opinion i think it is the best dceu movie to date or i guess ever considering that the dceu is pretty much over after aquaman 2 the peacemaker cast is really well done and handled it doesn't feel overbearing or not enough screen time given to some of the characters they all have really good chemistry and honestly whether it be for like major roles or brief appearances why wouldn't we see other heroes of the dc universe in this movie i mean considering the fact that it is the first major film in this new dc universe so it's important to set the foundation of what this universe is like considering that we know that there are already pre-established heroes like it's going to be interesting to see like what does the public think about these heroes like what's the public reception are they a fan or are they kind of hesitant like how do the heroes operate how many of them are out and about do they know each other because in the film with you know superman legacy the big part of the story is seeing sides of clark kent's life you know his kryptonian heritage his hero life his life at the daily planet with his supporting cast at the daily planet with lois lane jimmy olsen perry white seeing some of his family with like the kents and maybe even with the kryptonian heritage going back to that movie with like supergirl for a little bit learning more about krypton the fortress of solitude jor-el and there's a possibility that a character like maxwell lord being played by sean gunn or you know james gunn's brother couldn't make an appearance in superman legacy but more so like in the background but like i said it's important to have that casting as he will appear in the future of the universe and then you have you have the typical people you know getting on james gunn's case and whatnot talking about oh nepotism this nepotism it's a map oh he puts his wife in everything oh he works with the same people and over and over again you guys are acting like directors or writers or creatives working with the same people that they know are talented is a foreign concept like christopher nolan has hired michael kane for like every other movie that he's <laughs> directed at this point be like oh but he put hardcore and economos in the postcard scene of shazam fear of the gods no he didn't actually like it was been stated that the original intent for the postcard scene of shazam 2 was for black adam to show up but for some reason the dwayne the rock johnson had this weird perception that he shouldn't fight shazam but like fight Superman instead it's like hmm Shazam Phil and not fighting Shazam uh, okay so instead they implemented John Economos and Harcourt to initiate Shazam into the Justice Society for some reason and a lot of people think that was James Gunn's doing but keep in mind that movie was mostly done way before James Gunn and Peter Safran even came on board for DC Studios to take over not to mention the fact why would James Gunn set up something that wouldn't even continue knowing he was going to reboot he also like said that that wasn't even his creative decision to have that post credit scene in there and I know there is a lot of debate and debacle of Henry Cavill's departure of the Superman role which is unfortunate but at the end of the day none of this would even have happened if Warner Brothers wasn't so incompetent and if Warner Brothers really wanted to keep Henry Cavill then they would have had him sign a contract at the end of Black Adam but it is what it is look all I'm gonna say is you know if you're not a fan of James Gunn's style of comic book films if you're worried about the DCU that's perfectly fine ain't nothing wrong with that but having all these quick judgments before like the movie even comes out like bro just let him cook all right he's gonna deliver and more importantly move on from holding on to any remnants or attachments to the DCEU because my guy that joint is dead.